Hi, everyone. Uh, we're going to talk about randomness in Elm today. And I invite you to join me on an amazing journey through time and space. We're going to be journeying to Republican Rome. This is the period uh, before the Roman emperors started, approximately 2,000 to 2,500 years ago. And by Republican Rome, I'm not talking about this. Think less this elephant and more this elephant. <laughs> uh, these elephants are part of Hannibal's army facing down a Roman army commanded by Publius Scipio Africanus. We'll hear a little bit more about him later. But let's talk about you. You're an ancient software engineer living in Rome, and business has been slow recently. You're sitting in your workshop uh, just after lunch, and someone walking a hood, wearing a hood walks in. And all of a sudden, she reveals herself. This is the goddess Juno. She's the Roman goddess of marriage, fertility, and childbirth. And incidentally, also the one for whom our month of June is named for. And she's coming to you because she's got a problem. Part of her job is picking out worthy families to bless with children and also naming those children. Now, this was really easy when Rome was a smaller town, but the population has been exploding, and her job is unsustainable. Uh, in fact, she's complaining to you that she now has no life, and that you know, just last week, she had to meet out, miss out on this really sweet party that Jupiter was hosting, and this is not working out. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to automate the process. She would like you to build a dashboard with all of Rome's population to make it really easy for her to bless various families with children. She'd also like you to randomly generate the names for these children. But she warns you, Romans have a fairly complex arcane system for naming their kids, and the names you generate must be valid. You're intrigued. You ask for more. And so she starts describing the system. So Romans have a slightly different system for uh, the names of men and women. And so looking at this guy here, Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus, the general we mentioned earlier facing off Hannibal, this guy's a military hero. He's the only one who could defeat Hannibal, and he's incredibly popular. So his full name, Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus, uh, the first part, Publius, is his praenomen. Uh, this is a personal name, kind of like a modern day first name. Cornelius is his nomen. This is the name of his family or clan, very similar to a modern day last name. Scipio is his cognomen. This is a sort of nickname, but it can also be inherited. So over time, it becomes a way to identify particular branches within a family or clan. And finally, uh, Africanus is his ognomen. This is a nickname or honorific uh, that can be given to you if you already have a cognomen. In this case, Africanus is to commemorate his victories in Africa. Now, not everybody has all four names. Uh, the last two are optional. So some famous Romans that did not have all four include Gaius Julius Caesar, who did not have the agnomen, and Mark Antony, who did not have either a cognomen or an agnomen. Now, the naming scheme for women is a little bit more uh, in flux. It changes over time, and uh, it's also different from the way men's scheme work. Uh, Roman society was a pretty sexist place, and women did not get personal names. Instead, they were primarily known by their family name. Here we see uh, this woman, Cornelia Africana Minor, the daughter of Publius Cornelius Scipio. And she would have primarily been known by the feminine version of her family name, Cornelia, as her nomen. Now, this would have been the same for everybody else, so the daughter of Julius Caesar would have been named Julia, the daughters of Mark Antony would have been named Antonia, and so forth. Particularly in the late Republic, uh, a lot of women started inheriting a cognomen from their father, as is the case here. And then finally, uh, because all daughters were named the same, Romans needed a way to differentiate among them. 
And so they had a differentiator. Here, minor is uh, kind of like the modern junior. It's a way of saying that you're the, the second one. Uh, sometimes we translate it the younger. So she's sometimes known as Cornelia Africana the younger. So having gone through all of this, you decide, yes, this is a good idea. I accept this project. You jump on and start writing it in Elm. So you start modeling the problem. <laughs> and try to keep it very simple to start with. Uh, you use a dict to hold all of the Romans because it's very easy to update them in place that way. You build out a type for Romans uh, with an ID, a clan, uh, a type for children, and a name. Here we're using a type, a specific type for children that wraps a list of more Romans because otherwise you get an infinite recursive type alias error. And then finally, the meat of this is this name type, either a female name with an optional cognomen and an optional differentiator, or a male name with a required prenomen, optional cognomen, optional cognomen. The clan has a name and a color because we want to display people with a different color depending on their clan. The view is pretty straightforward. We display each Roman in a list element colored with their clan's color, and we have a button to bless them with children uh, <laughs> with a generate child for action. Finally, the update function here. Uh, there's two events that can happen. One that gets triggered by clicking the button, which, if you see in the case statement here, doesn't modify the model. Instead, it does, seems to do some kind of command. And we'll dig into that in a couple minutes. And also, birthing a child, once that child has been generated, we append it to the parent. So let's talk about randomness in a functional world. It's not as straightforward as you might think. So pure functions always return the same value when past the same arguments. So here, 2 and 2 is always 4. Floor of 5.6 is 5. 2 upper of ABC is uppercase ABC. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. It doesn't matter what the state of your file system is, the network connection. You always get the same results. Random is inherently not pure. So this is Rand from Ruby. And I called it a bunch of times and got a different result every time. So how might we make this a pure function? We do this by passing in a seed. So you see here, uh, by passing in the seed one, two, three, now my random function returns the same result every time. This is now pure. Most languages actually do this seed passing thing in the background, even though it looks like their random functions are not doing that. And that initial seed probably comes from dev random or dev u random on a Unix system. Um, and this kind of random is called pseudo-random. And do note that it is not cryptographically secure. So don't use any of the techniques we're talking about here today to do crypto or any kind of security because it's not secure. And this goes for the pseudo-random functions in most other languages as well. So how does Elm do random? So we can pass in an explicit seed to the function random step here. Uh, it takes two arguments, a seed and a random generator. What the generator does is it takes randomness and turns it into a value of the type we desire. So here it's a Boolean. Notice that the return type of this function is a tuple. We get both the Boolean, the random Boolean we asked for, and we get a new random seed that we can pass into a generator again so that we can do more randomness. Now this gets very tedious to handle all these random seeds. And unless you explicitly need to pass one in, there's a better way. In Elm 017, uh, we now have this random generate function, which, when given a generator and a message tag, will automatically handle the seeds for us. It returns a command that will generate a random value for us and return it to us wrapped in this message type. And so that's what we're doing here. So a, ra a Roman is a complex value. There's multiple random components to it. And it would be really tedious to keep building commands to get each of the components and then combine them all together. 
Instead, what we want to do is build a single generator that gets called once and returns us this Roman data structure. So let's dive into building some generators. So a Roman generator is actually broken up into several smaller generators, which are in turn broken up into even smaller generators. Uh, the ones on the bottom are the simplest and therefore the easiest to build. And the best way to uh, attack this problem is to start from the bottom and work our way up. So how do you build a generator? Uh, you can use existing functions from the core library or from a third-party package. So here we're building the differentiator for the female name, and we're picking a random element from the list, either mayor, minor, prima, or tertia, and we're sampling that, so it returns a maybe string. But oftentimes, just using a function from an existing package doesn't quite cut it. Uh, oftentimes, we'll want to transform that value into something else, and so here, we want to get a female name with built on top of the differentiator generator that we built. And so we can use random.map, and we give it a function, and it will transform the value of the generator that we pass into it. Note here that the differentiator here is not a value, it is a generator. So what we're saying here is when you generate a first uh, female name, first generate a differentiator and then convert it into a female name. Note that we're passing in nothing as the cognomen here, just a hard-coded value. And what we actually want is it to use a generator here. We want to do multiple independent random roles. So how would we do that? It's not very different. Uh, random has a map two, a map three, a map four, and so on and you just give it individual generators, it will generate values from all of them independently and then combine them together using the function that you give it. But not all roles are going to be independent. Uh, particularly for the male names, we see that uh, there's a, actually a chain of dependencies. Here we've built up a generator for the male name, similar to how we built up the female name. We're generating three independent roles for pronomen, cognomen, and ognomen, and combining them together with map three. But that's actually not correct. Juno told us that the ognomen should only get rolled if the cognomen is present. So this is what a more correct ognomen generator might look like. It takes in a maybe string, the cognomen, as an argument, and based on that, does a case statement and either picks a random value from the list of possible ognomens or returns a constant generator that returns nothing. Now, it's important on that bottom nothing case to return a generator and not just the value nothing. So that's why I'm wrapping it in a constant generator that just always returns nothing. And we can use the and then function from the random module to chain dependent roles together. So here, we're doing our regular map three thing that we've seen earlier, but we're saying for the final argument uh, to generate an ognomen, first generate a cognomen, and then take that result and pass it into the ognomen generator and generate that. Um, you might be thinking, maybe I could have used map here. And if you had, what you would have gotten is a generator inside a generator. And what you really want is more of a flat map sort of operation, and that's exactly what and then does. So if you're working on a, a random project like this and the compiler gives you a too deeply nested generator error uh, and you're using random map, you probably want to use and then instead. There's actually a bug in this code. Does anybody spot it? That's correct. We're generating cognomen twice, and so we might get nothing the first time and then get a value the next time, and so our calculation's not right. So here's the correct version. We've inverted the logic a little bit. Uh, now the whole male name generation happens. 
uh, by passing in the cognomen, and we can generate it with our map three. We don't do any and then at that level. And note that because cognomen is passed in as a value, we wrap it again in the constant generator to make sure that random map three takes in three generators. And then finally, for our high level mail name, we say roll a cognomen, and then based on that result, pass it into the mail name from cognomen function. And that's really all there is in the random playbook. You now know every technique. You can use existing generators. If that's not good enough, you can transform existing generators using map. If you need multiple independent roles, combine them together with map two, map three, map four, and so on. And if you have a chain of dependent roles, you can combine them together with and then. Now you've noticed that I've pulled functions from the random extra package. Uh, that's part of the Elm community. It has a lot of convenient helper functions, but there's really no magic there. You could have implemented all of these yourself using the techniques that we discussed. And so to complete the project for Juno, we just need to follow these steps and keep repeating, and finally profit. Now for some extra credit, we could add some more rules to make it more historically accurate. Uh, some families preferred particular pronomens, and so we might pull from a list specific to your family. Uh, men's cognomens are actually hereditary, and so if it's present, we should probably make that hereditary for men as well as for women. And finally, some roles are just you roll it or not, but maybe we want to weight them with a percentage. Let's actually take a look at what we've built. Nope, not that. Other side? Mm, ah, there it is. OK. Let's see if I can find my mouse. There it is. So here we've got Gaius Julius Caesar. Let's bless him with a child. Oh, he's got another daughter, Julia. Let's give him another one. Oh, now he's got a son, Lucius Julius Caesar. Let's give Mark Antony a child as well. All right. I think Juno's going to be happy with this. No. All right. So some high-level principles here. Uh, when dealing with random, take advantage of commands to deal with the random seeds. Try to make as few calls as possible to random generate, uh, and instead build up a single uh, generator that will build your complex type. And when building complex generators, uh, use map, map2, and then to compose smaller generators together, and starting with the simple ones, build from the bottom up. So thank you for joining me on this journey. I'm Joel Kenville. I'm a developer at ThoughtBot. And uh, you can see there my Twitter and GitHub. The slides are up on GitHub at ElmConf Talk. And the demo we watched, the source and the uh, live version, are also on GitHub at ElmConf Demo. Thank you very much.